Now, you're one of the longest running members of the cast. Are you still enjoying it after all these years? Oh, yeah, no, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I wouldn't be here otherwise, but no, I've, I've been on Home and Away almost nine years now, so. Really? Half my entire life. Wow. How has <laughs> it changed in that time? Oh, I, I mean, it's changing all the time, and sometimes we'll have lots of characters that leave and we get all these new people, which is good because it keeps it fresh and whatever, but it's a bit sad when everyone goes. Yeah. Did like you, when you left. Did you get upset? When you left? Yeah. Oh, I've pretended to be upset. No, 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 I don't. I miss you, Tristan. I, you don't. <laughs> I do. that's, what, that's what hurts me. No, I don't. Is it tough trying to do um, school work? Because you've been doing it for years. I mean, some people come in in the last couple of years of school or do a term like Dita and then, and then finish, and <laughs> no, then finish school. No, no. Is it tough for you having had to do that virtually all your school life? I don't even really think about it. I mean, people ask that all the time, but the thing is, I, I don't know what it's like to go to school full time um, because I got the role of um, Sally when I was eight years old and I can't, I can't remember going to school five days a week. So sometimes when I've got time off and I go to school for five days in a row, at the end of the week, I'm just tired and I lie on my bed and go, I can't believe it. Do you think you're going to be here in uh, sort of 35 years time. There's people on Coronation Street that have honestly been there for 35 years. Would you, what do you think Sally would do if she stayed on the show that long? I, don't, I think she'd turn into Pippa. Yeah. And then Elsa, I don't know, <laughs> fostering her own kids. And oh no, I don't think I'll be here that long. No? But mate, I mean, at the beginning of when Home and Away first started, I probably didn't think that I'd be there nine years. So who knows? <laughs> Dan Amalm played Jack Wilson, the tearaway bad boy that we love to hate. OK, so we all know Jack, but let's do a quick character breakdown on the man himself. On one hand, he's sensitive, pensive and creative, and on the other hand, he... Well, to put it mildly, you don't want to mess with this guy. <coughs> to let off steam and keep fit, he takes every opportunity to knock the stuffing out of a punch bag in downtown Sydney. <coughs> <coughs> Put that away. <laughs> now, you out of anyone in the show uh, have had some pretty amazing storylines. What has been your, your favourite moment so far? I think it all started out uh, having a kid that I didn't know about for one and then marrying a, a yobbo yeah. who didn't have a job. Uh -huh. and, uh, and who was that? Uh, <clears throat> oh, you're right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then having a, a baby and then getting hit, getting hit by a truck, which Alf was driving and then getting married in a wheelchair, but miraculously standing up at the end. And, um, and then a kid having leukaemia was another amazing storyline. And after that, uh, a bone marrow transplant and then all these other things. So um, I think they should put my character in a mental hospital when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that having had two children that you're prepared for childbirth now? I am, yeah. I mean, these, this last scene, uh, birth that I did, um, it was, uh, it was a lot of hard work and, uh, and it hurt a lot and, um, and I think I'm all ready. I'm all ready for it. <laughs> did, you, did you research that a lot? I, I, I watched a lot of videotapes and stuff like that. It was very emotional because it's such a beautiful thing. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't, so you... doesn't prepare you for the real thing, of course. No. I was lucky I got to pretend. But do you know that breathing? Have you got that breathing down, mm. Pat? <laughs> That's whistling, Melissa. No, thanks, Tristan. <laughs> But the way they shot it when I was having these contractions looked very funny. Yeah? Yeah, it was great. It was good fun. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, good girl. OK, I want you to do one more push. Big push. One more. Mouth closed. Big push. OK, go. That's it, go. Push. Push. Was it tough? Um, like, it's great that you've, that you've had all this success, but it was the price of it was having to move away from your family yeah. really young, wasn't it? Well, was I mean, that I was a tough 16. Thing? Um, it was very 
very tough, but I think I was just very excited by the fact that I was going to be on Home and Away, that I didn't stop and thought, think that uh, uh, what I was actually doing. Uh, I hurt my parents a lot. They were very upset that I'd left, you know. But they knew they couldn't just say, no, Melissa, you're not going to go on Home and Away. You're going to stay here and do school. I mean, you can't do that. And uh, and they're very glad that I, I, it's gone so well for me. Are you glad you didn't stop to think? Yeah. Oh, oh, you never should. You never should. You never go with your instinct and you, what your heart says. And that was just to, obviously... I was always doing crazy things as a child, you know, from roller skating to modelling and travelling all over the place. And coming to Sydney to be on home and I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, okay. right, cool. Days, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I loved home and away. Well, well Dad only uh, put on home and away when we were having dinner and that was it. So tell me more about your family in Perth. Oh, it's hard than being so far away. And also, actually, what's hard is it's for them to try and understand the sort of business I'm in, you know, that they, hear, they read the magazines every day and see these things that I'm doing and some of them are true and some of them aren't. And so I'm always on the phone, Dad, I did not have a cigarette in my hand, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But um, I, I phone them a lot, you know, I, I phone them quite a lot, and, which gets a bit expensive, you know. My latest bill was about, what is it? $494. $494? For a month. This ring birth. Yeah, I mean, it's great. You know, I thought, I th they all thought, my brothers and sisters thought that maybe now that Mel, or Lissy they called me, is going yeah. away, she's going to change and, you know, she's not going to want to, you know, How she's going to be too busy and not going to want to ring us or, or keep yeah. in touch. And but they're my flesh and blood, you know. They're, yeah. I'll do anything for them. And well, I mean, Perth's, Perth's like five hours away. How do you, um, do you do you go back often? Yeah, I do. I go back whenever I can, maybe for publicity or whatever. But um, I, don't, I haven't had any time off on the show. I've had a three-year contract. And I, I only get a month off at Christmas where I go overseas and, and have fun or, or go to Perth as well. So when I leave the show, it'd be a good time to actually go home. And, and it's kind of nice, you know, you, you, you're a teenager. You don't want your parents there in Sydney every day coming home and watching Home and Away and with you and you come home and you say, you know, hi, Mum and Dad. It's like, it's good that it's worked out great because it's taught me to think for myself, make my own decisions. And what about Steve, the new love in your life? That sort of was a bit of a whirlwind romance. Yeah, I was a bit dumb. It hurt that you didn't ring up and tell me that it was over between us. Well, Tristan, your bill was $800. <laughs> and you, not once did you ring me. <laughs> In six months of being away, you never phoned me. <laughs> Garbage. So I forgot about you, you know. And, your phone's and always off. You disconnected it. <laughs> no, Steve, he's, um, oh, what can I say? I'm very happy. And when, when the going gets tough at work, I just switch off and think of him and everything seems fine. So it's good. It's good you see the man? Life. You see the one? Oh, who knows? Yeah. I'm just having a great time. Is it good to is it good to fall in love so young? Yeah. yeah. But you know, I've been falling in and out of love since I was thirteen. <laughs> You're very close, Tristan. <laughs> you you love away it. Or now, I um, I actually uh, found this uh, when I was hunting <laughs> ah, around your flat before. You've been learning a bit of Italian. A little bit of Italiano. Now I want you to uh, tell me what you want to do with me in Italian. Ah, all right. Okay. Let's see. Come on, hit me with it. Uh, vorrei andare a New Atere col tubo e la mascara. Oh, mm. sensational. <laughs> what does that mean? I'd like to go snorkeling with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, no yeah, worries. Yeah, good. Uh, I appreciate it. You don't it. deserve it. <laughs> this epic athlete, this towering mass of muscle, this creator of Home and Away's most epic character has managed to squeeze us into his busy fitness schedule. He is none other than Mr. Ray Ma, alias Alf Stewart. G'day, mate. How you going? Not too bad, mate. How are you? It's oh, good to see you. That's good. G'day. You bring a dog with you? I did. Did I did. you? Woodrow. Well, mate, I'll tell you what. I've just done 35 Ks, fit as a Mallee Bull, but now it's time to hit the gym. We need to do a bit of work on the weights. Come with me. Mate, I don't know what I'd do without this gymnasium and these weights. Ah, the problem is, you see, after you have 35 pints with this arm, you've got to remember to change it to this arm for the next 35. That's the biggest <laughs> worry. You said 35 out there, too. You said 35 Ks. Did you mean you ran 35 kilometres? <laughs> 35? No, 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 mate, no. I meant I ran 35 metres. You see, I'm still having a few problems with this decimal distances and all that sort of thing. 
No, you're looking good. I know you're wearing one of your old uh, rugby jerseys. Yeah. Oh, that's an old um, golden oldies jumper. What does that say? Sydney, 1983. Bit of a worry, isn't it? Means I was a uh, old enough to be golden a golden oldie in 83. 13 years ago, yeah. Well, yeah, that makes me about 420, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you enjoy working with the younger actors on the show? I mean, in no other occupation would you deal with 15-year-olds um, and treat them as peers. Well, have you forgotten already? <laughs> God, are they hard to train? Well, they were a few years ago, young bloke Banks. I tell you what, we had a lot of trouble with him. <laughs> but apart from that, uh, no, most of them are pretty good. Yeah, nice bunch of kids. The girls that we've got at the moment are absolutely fantastic. Uh, really strong bunch. And um, there's a few new boys just come in and uh, they're looking the goods as well. I mean, we've, we've just been blessed, you know, with the ability of the young people. And the, the workload is so hard. And some of the kids uh, live in other cities. They move down to Sydney a long way from home and parents and things like that. And most of them are just amazingly well. Yeah. Does that keep you on your toes as far as the turnover the kids? What, remembering their names? Or? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and remembering their, their character names and all that sort of stuff. But no, but keeping you on your toes as far as you're... Um, you know, having to having to get used to working with a new set of kids every you know once a year oh look i think uh, you know i mean if you're a freelance actor i mean it's it's hard to say that when you've been at home and away for nine years i suppose i've forgotten what it's like to be a freelance actor but um you get used to working with different people and there's an adjustment period usually but often during that adjustment period there's some wonderfully spontaneous things that happen and some good work occurs are you still enjoying it yeah look i mean it's like any job uh it has its highs and its lows and um you know, you get a good storyline sometimes, and storyline, and your wallpaper for some of the rest of the time. Um, but across the board, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable than not, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Alf's not a very uh, pleasant character, is he? He's also got a very bad attitude. I mean, how do you feel about playing such a nasty piece of work? What a bad attitude. He's got a heart of gold, mate. He's a lovely bloke. No, well, I'm not saying he's not lovely. He's a, he's a good guy, but I mean, as far as the audience is concerned, they must think he's a. You know, a very hard character who gives the kids a hard time. He's always abusing people. Hey, hang on rude. a minute. What sort of flaming mate are you? Well, Listen, I don't have to sit here and cough this. I've had a gut. No, well, you get out of I'm here. I'm just saying, you mongrel, get out. Out. And you get out of here, too. I've had a gut full of you as well. I remember these shaky old stairs. It's a bit spooky, actually. There's a few ghosts in here for me. They've definitely improved the decor since I was here last, though. This, of course, is the beach house. That was there when I was here. <laughs> Some things never change. People are constantly asking me what happens to the actors once they leave. Lisa Lackey, my ex-on-screen housemate who played Foxy Roxy Miller, has done very well for herself. Since leaving the bay, a very different looking Lisa has most recently appeared in the new series of Flipper. If you're going to survive in this industry, you've got to swim with the sharks. You're looking a little, uh, a little oh. different now, aren't you? Um, yeah, so I when you're working on the show. Grew the, uh, grew the hair so that I was in a disguise. Yeah? yeah? How important was it for you to change your appearance? Very important. Yeah? Very important. Because I, I wanted to be seen um, to be able to play different characters. And it's very easy, especially coming out of a soap, as you yeah. know, for two and a yeah. half years. You know, people automatically would still call me Roxy. I mean, they still do. Did important. you find it constricting working in, working in something that's pumped out at, at, at the rate of knots? Um, I did. I, I was, a lot of the time I was quite unhappy. Yeah. And I found it, um... Yeah, it was just a little sterile and it was very institutionalised, yeah. you know. I sort of felt like I was in jail a bit of the time and I was, you know, really keen to, keen to go. Because yeah. you get to a point where you've, you can't really learn anymore. Yeah. You know, you've learned how the, the technical side works. Yeah. You've, you've, you've learned how to pump out your lines, your short memories at its peak. And you're like, right, And well, still you're expected to, to go with the flow, though, and conform into that you Yeah, know, into I'm that not mold. much of a conformist. I don't, I don't have a good time conforming. I'm a little bit alternative. So yeah. it was good to be free. And to be able to, I mean, I travel a lot. I really enjoy that, you know, and that's, 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 I'm a bit of a free spirit. But then again, without Home and Away, I, I wouldn't have had the opportunity yeah, to do that. Yeah, so it's a so bit of a trade-off, isn't yeah, it? Is. Yeah, it is, it is. It, is it tough working with him and, and, you know, hanging out with him offset as well? Very, very tough. Oh, I really wish sometimes I could just get away. It's especially from him um, or the show? From him. <laughs> <laughs> especially, well, we're, we're going out together on screen, 
We're going out together off screen. We work together, practically live together. He's always at mine, I'm always at his. You get sick of each other, seeing each other all day and then going home and, you know, seeing each other all night, but, you know, you get over it. I mean, you just try not to, to sort of be with her all day and then when you get home, it's sort of like... And it sort of yes. dies. <laughs> Whenever I say, Shane, let's have a night apart, he gets all upset and thinks that I don't want him anymore. <laughs> but I, I know he feels the same. We're always saying, you know, we want our characters to sort of break up somehow, maybe. Really? Yeah, hopefully. So you want it to work so closely yeah, together on screen? Yeah, give us a bit of space. What would you like to happen? How would you like them to break up? Oh, oh no, I can't say. He'll get angry with me. <laughs> um, I, I want Chloe to have an affair. Really? Yeah. Why? But then he'll just think that's me in real life. Right? You just want an excuse to kiss other guys on screen. <laughs> no, never. No, no. I don't know. It'll just be exciting. Yeah. Something different. It can show Shane's true jealousy. <laughs> he won't have to act. <laughs> <laughs> What's her most annoying habit? Hers? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know if I could say that. <laughs> no, nah, um, don't know. She doesn't really have one. Doesn't she? She's got one, but I can't say. Oh, right. Yeah. OK. What's the, what's the most annoying thing that he does? Um, I mean, I know he's pretty annoying mm, himself. What should but, I uh, say? That's the thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Go on. Spits out the car window. Oh. I hate it. <laughs> what about the toilet seat? Does he leave the toilet seat up? or? Yeah. He does. All the time. And yeah. I, especially at my house, I hate that. <laughs> What's her most uh, endearing habit? What? What, what, what do you uh, like about her? What do I like about her? Um, when she acts like a baby. She, yeah. say, she says these little baby things that you just go, oh, you just love them. She's so cute. Oh, that's this little cute. pudgy face. Very sweet, sensitive. He, um, he loves me. Does he? Yeah. That's beautiful, don't. <laughs> Bring a tear to a grown man's eye. I want to talk to you about your your on-screen character, Curtis. He's a bit of a uh, bit of a lad, always getting into trouble and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Are you? Uh, are you he's not too good at school. What are your What are your grades like? My grades, um, oh, you know, A B, you know, just top of the class. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, grades are always uh, pretty much down the bottom with me, because I went to a private school and you know I wasn't as good as everyone else. So, uh, so. Wasn't too good, but then when I went to a public school, I saw my grades sort of, grades sort of went straight up to the top because um, I did all the work before. It's kind of like you know, like you were at school. Yeah. The apples. What A and B's? Oh, oh yeah. Are you uh, are you doing school still? No, nah, no, nah, not anymore. Um, still in work, so I have got the time to do school work. The Easter show is a mixture of a fun fair, a horse show, and a cattle market. It's a great Australian tradition and people from all over the country come here to have fun. In fact, it's just the sort of place that the lovable Rough Diamond Irene Roberts would like to visit. So I hooked up with her alter ego, Lynn McGranger, for a toffee apple and a chat. You're a real um, sort of a bridge between the younger and older, older characters in the show, aren't you? Um, well, both on set and off. Uh, perhaps, yeah. Well, see, I think as far as Irene goes, I think because she's fallible and she's perceived by the younger viewers as being a fallible mum, yeah. She's not perfect, she's not a wise old sage, but she's really lived and and she's um, very streetwise. And yeah. I think almost, I think it's a case that the younger viewers perceive her as having been through the same problems that they go through, whether it's the temptations of alcohol, the temptations of drugs, the, the problems with relationships, all of that. I think the way she, the character is written, she she can solve those things because she's been through them well, that's, herself. But that's, that's you as well. I mean, you, you tend to, to relate to the younger characters. I mean, the younger I'm, actors. Younger, well, well I, I'm, I think I'm just probably because I'm, just you know, fun. I've got the maturity of a 12-year-old. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> and you love toffee apples. I love them. Let's yeah. go. You seem to have uh, taken, taken a, a while to get into the vibe of, of motherhood. Yes, yes. Um, I was um, uh... 13 when I had my, my um, now five-year-old daughter. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it's the best thing I ever did. Yeah, she... and is that, is that because the, the reason you were 30? <laughs> because, of your, because of the entertainment industry? Do you think that has an effect? Or... Um, no, I hated children. <laughs> no, it's a joke. No, I don't. Um, but you're a primary school teacher. I know, but uh, not a very good one. Yeah. Really not a very good one at all. No, I, I just think, you know, I've always done things late in life for some reason. I've always done everything that everyone else does, I do later. Yeah. And, and having a child was one of them. Yeah. And um, I just, um, with my partner Paul and I just decided that the time was ripe and uh, now we've got a beautiful five-year-old daughter. Yeah. And I think she's going to be following in Mum's footsteps.
Hey, you had some, some pretty scary moments in Home and Away. Far scarier than this. No, not nearly as scary as this. <laughs> What's your favourite moment? My favourite moments are being on the ground. <laughs> no, um, my, mo my most favourite, look, I can't even speak. My most favourite moment, I think, would, would be the country and western storyline. Yeah. Where Irene decided she wanted a fabulous costume. And so what happened was that it was all speckled with sparkly lights. And of course, what happened was that it, um, uh, it actually exploded. And uh, as I was on fire, Jack and uh, Curtis were madly trying to rip the clothes off me as, um, as a couple of other characters burst in the door. So, of course, what they saw was, uh, and what they interpreted as what they saw was completely different to what was going yeah, on. Yeah. But that was very, a lot of fun. Yeah. It was great fun. But um, also, uh, uh, as a result of that, Irene uh, sang in a country and western festival. Oh, really? And, uh, yes. You sing? I, I sing beautifully. Well, I think yeah. I do anyway. Really? <laughs> when I was just a young girl, stranger to the big world, found me a man with big, strong arms. He wired me and died me, told me that he loved me, and I melted in his love and charm. Carolyn, word. Oh, Donald, what a nice surprise. In case you forgot, I have a position to uphold in this community, and I, I will not have it undermined or compromised by anyone, including you. Is that clear? But Donald... Is that clear? Yes. Do you enjoy that wardrobe? Do you have any say? <laughs> well, why did you put a stop to it? Some things I say, I'm not wearing that. But um, most of the time you have to put your um, personal, what you think you should look like aside. You have yeah. to leave that at home. Yeah. And um, you have to say, OK, you can make my hair look completely stupid and yeah. put so much makeup on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, all that stuff, all that stuff um, allows you to sort of lose your perception of yourself, doesn't it? And uh, allows you to sort of get into the character. We've got to get in, yeah, and, and, you, and that's part of being an actor. You, you can't have any, you can't be vain and say, oh, I look terrible. Yeah. Because it just, you know, all these little girls say to me, why do you, why do you let them do that to you? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind, really. You are it's garbage. Part. I bet you when they have the sales, you're in there buying a couple right, of buy, dot numbers. Buying those little mini skirts. And yeah. <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of stuff do you wear, apart from um, nice silk gowns? Oh, this is this beautiful cape. Yeah. I, um, I like to wear just sort of more really simple suits and you know tailored suits and I like wearing black mm -hmm. black jumper black pants and just I don't wear anything like that. <laughs> I've heard a rumor that uh, you like to shop a little. Oh, who does yeah. that? Lynn McGranger, I'll tell yeah, you. She, <laughs> she spilled the beans. I do like shopping, but I like I like exercising and like cooking and like lots of things. Yeah. Yeah. The, the shopping things are myth. Yeah. And, I, and I also heard that you um, that you can light up a room with your personality. Oh! <laughs> Sheldon, you devil! <laughs> well, that, that's very kind. Yeah, it does that. Get <laughs> Is that just a rumour? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm embarrassed too. It's the infectious laugh. She's breaking out yeah. in a sweat. Look, I've got to leave you alone. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to go and uh, Thanks, sort of probe someone else. Oh, probe. Okay. Thanks, Em. <laughs> Bye. See ya. See ya. <laughs> What are you doing? Nothing. Last time I saw Ryan, he didn't want to know about girls. How game do you reckon you are? He told me they were full of girl germs, whatever they may be. Now it's time for his mum to be grilled. So is he being pushed, kicking and screaming into the limelight? No, we've always discussed this with him. Um, each time contracts came up for renewal, we would always talk to him and ask him if he was happy and he felt he was coping and if he wanted to go on. And he's always wanted to continue. And this is very important, I think. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't make him do something he doesn't want to do. That's yeah. impossible. Um, yeah. The children have to enjoy what they do and they have to feel relaxed and happy. How does it sit with the other kids? Most of the time it's great, it's fine, you yeah. know, they, they've been very good for him in that respect. They keep him very level-headed. Do they? Nothing well, like... Why am I knocking him down a few rungs? Nothing like brothers and sisters to keep you on track, you yeah. know, so... Uh, but uh, he doesn't really have a lot of opportunity to feel different because no, we don't treat him any differently. Yeah. He still has to do the same boring chores everyone else has to yeah. do at home and so forth. Now, Clarkie, you were six years old when you first started working on Home and Away. Do you still do you still remember your first day? Yeah, I can remember it a bit. It was 8th of February, about six years ago. Yeah, just roughly. Yeah, and um, 
I was working at Clareville Beach yeah. at the um, beach house. Yeah. And I was so nervous and it's not funny. Really? Had you watched the show before that? Um, yeah, I'd watched it a few times. All right. So you sort of knew, you'd been watching the credits, I guess, for the weeks before, just sort of checking everything out? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. How do your mates feel about you working on the show? Oh, they're all right. They're just normal now. It's like, yeah. it was a bit of a shock at first, but yeah. now they're all right. Do they still give you a hard time, like when you've got a, a dodgy storyline or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do they? Yeah. Yeah? What about um In the Fire and stuff like that? Do they do they all watch it? Yeah, most, like, some of them do. So yeah? It's all right. Cool. How about you, mate? Do you um, you're a bit of a, a champion surfer, I hear. Yeah. Did you? When, what uh, championship have you won? Um, I went in the Australian titles and won that up in Queensland. Yeah. That was for the surf club over here. Yes, that was. That's cool. So you're getting your fair share of the attention yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Do you guys find the uh, find the girlies throwing themselves at you? Oh, uh, not really. You don't. I wish. Do you? <laughs> I'm pretty keen to uh, get out in the surf myself. I've been living a life for the last five years pretending that I can surf, and I've, I've got to admit that I can't actually stand up on the board, so I want you guys to help me out. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Good stuff, let's do it. Uh, so how much time do you actually get to spend surfing off the show, mate? Um, I get quite a bit of time, actually. Like, after school, I surf. Like, when I'm not working, on the weekends, I surf in the day. Um, firstly, just put most of your weight towards the back of the board so you, right. you can move your arms and then start to paddle. Yeah. So that's what you're going to be doing when you catch the waves. Man, this is easy. And when you, ah. when you go to jump up, just grab both rails. Yeah. And jump straight up. And try not to get too much of your weight up the front. Concentrate right. more. Back of the board? Yeah. Back of the board, straight legs or yeah. bent legs? Just bent legs. Keep, okay. your, keep your balance mostly just relaxed. All right, hang loose. Yeah. All right, I'm loose. Okay, and how do I turn? Do you think I'll be doing turns today? Well, maybe not today, but... Okay. Hopefully. I'll give it my best shot, though. Yeah. All right, this is your leg rope. This is what we use to keep our board close to us so All it right. doesn't go into shore. Okay. Put it around your ankle. Yeah. And then you set. Go and do they ever come off? No. Okay. And not unless the whole thing snaps, which is very rare. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about how you actually started working on Home and Away. I read in the magazine that it might um, <clears throat> actually have something to do with me. The thing is, I was, okay, it's true, I'm not going to deny it. So I just come off Paradise Beach and then I thought, I might get too many Tristan Banks and my ears pricked towards <laughs> And then when I went into the audition, and then I got, and when I got it, the first thing I thought of, I thought, oh, I wonder if I get to meet him. I was so excited. And then I did, and then I thought, what was I thinking? He is the biggest loser. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I can't believe that you can say that. I know. You must get a lot of attention from guys being on the show. Yeah. How do you cope with that? Um, it's good sometimes because you always, you know, you feel like you look attractive and stuff, but it's just difficult when... You know, when they slip up and call you Shannon after about nine dates. And then it's like, all right, OK, I have a personality. Really? Do they know that? No. That you have a personality? Yes, and as if. <laughs> of course they know that. No, but it is really hard because you often think when someone likes you that you think, you know, maybe they just like me because of the position I'm in instead of um, who I really am, which I guess is a problem that everyone has. I mean, you love it, though. I've seen you in action in nightclubs. You love the attention. <laughs> Okay. No, I don't love her. I don't love her. What do you think of Australian men? My mother says to me, my mother's English, and she says, if you marry an Australian man, man you are just disowned. You can't do it. She always says that. <laughs> Why is that? Australian men are the most romantic in the world. It's... Yeah. I know burping's really cool and, like, ordering beer and then saying, I can't hang out with you tonight because I'd rather see my mates and the footy's on and here's, where's my Metallica tape? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's really good. That's a worldwide thing, though. No, I'm only joking. No, I think Australian men are wonderful. 
and, um, and I'm not going to be generalising about any nationality. But some British men scare me because we, we call them the KPT, Killer Pommy Tourists, because the show's really big over there and when they see you they get like frenzy look in their eye and they lunge towards you. Now, Shannon's a bit of a goody two-shoes. Do you ever get sick of her? No, she's very feisty. I don't get sick of her, no way. But I do get sick of, um... Well, you know how you do an episode and then the next episode you spend half of it recapping from the last one and then just to recap from the next one. And, and sometimes I think, oh, I've done this scene. The all that's changed is a couple of adjectives. I mean, we make two and a half hours a week and, and in it's, you know, it's just there to entertain. You know, people sit there with their dinner and they go, wow, it's sunny and it's beach and it's great fun. And, and that's the style. It's like you can't pretend to be something that you're not. Did you ever want to? Did you ever want to? Uh, I can't believe you. What do you, you pretend to be groovy. You had a storyline um, about we school girl was crushes on. We confused about her sexuality. Yeah. Is it, have you ever had? Have you ever had? An experience? No. 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 Honestly, I never have. And when I was researching it, I spoke to a lot of people, and a lot of them said, you know, I used to like my gym teacher or. You know, my best girlfriend I used to kiss when we were like 12 and maybe because I had four brothers, I always, I've never, I've never been confused about that. I've not seen anything wrong with it and it happens to a lot of people. You think it was a good issue to cover? Yeah, I think it was very good. Home is very topical at the moment. They're dealing with everything from, you know, drug abuse to sexuality and it's good because it's, you know, it's for teenagers. Did you always want to be a writer? No, oh, well, I couldn't help it. I just couldn't be anything else. Same way for you, too, isn't it? It's pretty hard sometimes. Yeah, well, we all write for my wounds. That's it. That's exactly it. You know, um, I don't think I've ever felt as close to anyone as I do with you. I just want to say, I'm sorry to bring it up again. I know that we've covered it, but did you purchase that shirt with the intent to wear it? Or did you just purchase it because you thought, you know, I'm a bit crazy, wacky This is guy. my favourite shirt. It's beautiful, don't you think? You should see the girls, they go crazy. So you're just putting on a show. <laughs> a show for the cameras. Think down inside, you love it. Some of us might have time to sit around in coffee shops all day, but the rest of us have got places to go, people to see. Most of the actors you'll either find in the green room, on set, or in makeup, but there's one that you will always find in a dressing room. Come in if you're pretty. Judy Nunn. Because she's constantly writing her books. How oh, are you? Are you? Pretty. Hello, Tristan. How are you, darling? Very Good well. To see you. Don't call me pretty. Uh, what's the uh, What's the latest novel that you're working on? Oh, actually, funny you should say that. It's called Cal, K A L, which is short for Oh, this is my studio's look, as you know, um, which is short for Kalgoorlie, which is a mining town in Western Australia and uh, the richest mining town ever in the whole world, like it'll never run out of gold. Do you still enjoy working on the show after so many years? Yeah, I do, Tris. Um, it's not uh, massively uh, artistically challenging for me um, because it's now whatever, how, you know, nine odd years down the track. But I enjoy the, the people that I work with, as you know. I mean, they're a great gang. Love the crew, love the actors. Yeah. yeah. Do you cope, how do you cope working with um, so many young people? Um, it's the, the pressure that it does bring, uh, uh, carry with it, is funnily enough it's not the generation gap uh, I think that we get on pretty well I really do I think we're very lucky but it does carry a pressure as in um, well you know Ray and Norman and myself the oldies we all have a pretty well-defined sense of humor now we would love to muck around very often more than we can afford to when they're scenes that are heavily involving very young teenagers like you know 13 14 15 16 year olds and they're not they don't have our experience to simply okay that was fun we had a joke then concentration back get in focus and we can't afford to and then suddenly when you're doing a whole lot of scenes just with the adults you suddenly think how come this is so easy it's because yeah. we can muck around do you ever have to uh, pull rank oh I have um, yeah and a couple of times when we've had a the odd little one or two which really happens who really believe their own publicity I've enjoyed pulling rank like there's no tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> fun what about your character? Do you still try and keep a hardened edge to her? Yes, I try and keep a hard edge, um, but not a brutal edge. Not a, she's not a vicious woman, and she's not a bitchy woman. She's not sort of high camp theatrical Maggie Smith type or anything, which I'd love to play personally. Um, but I have to keep her tough and nice at the same time, which is interesting because I'm basically not really nice. So that is the test in playing. What, character. you as Judy are not really nice? No, not really. No, you're a pussycat. No, I'm, I'm too tough. Yeah. You're a pussycat. Oh, you found me out, Tris. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you uh, get on okay. with your, your books. Thank well, you very much. I have a deadline to make. Beautiful. It's been beautiful talking to you. Enjoy. See ya.
We'd met a couple of times in Melbourne. Yeah, briefly, and, um, at a, a friend's party. He well, was, we were with other people. He was with this gorgeous, hello, hi, blonde, 20-year-old. Yeah. Huh. A bombshell. Really? Yeah. Was that you? Did no, you dye your there. hair? No, 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 no it wasn't no, no, me. No. That was when, before he started working on Home and Away. And I, I knew Dennis's work because he'd done uh, the lead role in a film called Return Home, which was widely acclaimed here. And so I... I remember seeing Return Home at the AF, the Australian Film Institute screenings and thinking, oh, he's a bit of all right, but putting it out of my mind. Yeah. And then... Because um, he was um, with his daughter. Well, <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. No, and then I'm, I'm glad you asked me this question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the talker in the family. Yeah, true. <laughs> we made our marriage vows with that. I talk, you listen. <laughs> our, our daughter is a picture of me in a soundtrack of <laughs> He Just before he proposed to me in England in 1991, um, I was doing a pantomime in Leeds. Uh, Pinocchio and on the opening night uh, or the day of the opening night one of the guys in it had was in plaster because his Achilles tendon had snapped and the producer was running with a huge fit and um, I just said oh Dennis will fill in I was over visiting Deborah and a bit grumpy because I because he wasn't in it uh, and um, so he went on stage that night and played this amazing policeman and I was looking from the wings thinking yeah, I mean, I was already in love with him at that stage, but now I was really bowled over have by this extraordinary hard, talent. Because I was hoping, you know, well, oh, wouldn't it be nice if someone got sick or something? And, and they did. You know, yeah. I didn't push him. No, <laughs> it wasn't your fault. But yeah, How long after very... that did he propose to you? Only a couple of nights. It was a couple of nights after that, and yeah, I was ready to say, Must yeah. Must on stage after... or just before? Oh, no, 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 I, after... I won't tell you where we, he's proposed. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I can't remember. But, uh, no, I was, no, I right. was sober. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> weren't you? Yes, of course. Oh, I right, good. How do you cope eating, living, working, and bringing up a baby together? Oh, living. We fight. No, we, no, we do. Yeah, no, we actually do. But there are only little tiny minor disputes about, you know, stuff like why didn't you put more water in the kettle before you knew I wanted to boil it for a cup of tea, dear? But during the pregnancy, we were fine because that was just two people getting in a car and going to work. And then Grace arrived and we had this third person living with us suddenly. I often didn't have to hear her crying before I knew that she needed a feed because your breasts do funny things when you're breastfeeding. They leak when the baby needs a feed. It's fabulous. Um, so I'd just say to Dave Gould, who was our first then, uh, excuse me, Dave, I've... and if it was the end of a scene, normally the changes are really quick. You'd only have like two minutes. And he'd actually give me five to ten minutes. Do you think you could spend a couple of hours in a lift with Pippa? <laughs> <laughs> if you like meatloaf. Uh, <laughs> what would Pippa do for a couple of hours in the lift? She's, cause she's bake. busy. Yeah, recipe. bake. Yeah, well, well there's nothing recipe. to work with. She's very busy. Pippa's an extremely busy person. And, and I mean, I, the whole routine with my playing her is just to keep busy. And occasionally we have directors who want me to stand in one spot. And I say, no, I'm sorry, Pippa doesn't stand in her house. You'll either have me walking through to the laundry or coming from the oven or coming from the pantry. Do you think that you could be friends with Pippa? Oh, I, yeah, I would be, I think, because she's, I mean, we, of course we're similar. I mean, of course that, um, you know, I, she reminds me of my mum, I mean, the character, because my mum had six kids and always did everything for, for us yeah. and sacrificed enormous amounts of uh, her time and yeah. energy and everything for yeah. us. And Pippa's the same as that, so I've sort of based her on my mum, basically. So obviously there's similarities there. Yeah. But, but it I, is unfair in a way, because kids write to us and say, oh, we oh. wish you were our parents, yeah. you know, oh, and, no. uh, and uh, we wish Deborah was, you know, Pippa was my mum and all that thing. But, but it's a bit unfair because, I mean, it's, it's it's all very well to be this Mother Teresa on screen, but, yeah. uh, you and know, it's their own parents that do the hard slog of the discipline yeah. and all that. Because I don't have that. When I take my makeup off at the end of the day, that's it. I'm, I'm really not anything like her. Your ending, your sort of departure from the show, yes. was probably one of the most dramatic sequences ever ever shot yeah it was, it was, they said that it was yeah. great it was had a lovely you know film vibe about it you know it was uh, they put a lot of time and effort and money into it and it was just yeah um it was the only sad part was it was my last stuff you know it was the the exit but how did you feel to be written out of the show oh it's a bit of a shock at the time when you first hear but they were very good about it they gave me six months notice which is you know a bit unheard of and and a bit of a shock, and but once that settles in, you realise it's the best thing for you because you have to move on sometime, or otherwise you are you're you're Michael on Home and Away, or you're a freelance actor. Now, which which do you want to be for your life? So you got to kick on sometime.
Glad you left? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah really glad. Um, uh, I've just been having a, you know, an awesome time. Uh, 96 has brought heaps of, you know, heaps of new work for me. Um, just changed my life. And my life's just... What about the way you left? Are you glad that you left with a bang? Yeah, well, it was a bit, in the end, it was a bit, um, a bit of a sorry death. You know, I thought it could be a little more exciting. Uh, maybe with the bike, you know, I could have gone after the bike accident. Um, or you know, lost out at sea when I was working with uh, Nick Testoni. There were a few, um, so there were a few opportunities, and they decided to uh, yeah, decide to save you. Yeah, it's decided. Well, they decided to go with a cut finger and blood infection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty well, at dramatic. Least at least yeah. it's original, though. People, have, plenty of people <laughs> yeah, have died at sea, but no one's died of the cut yeah. finger. Did you like your character at the start, or did you did yeah. you enjoy it more at the end? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I had a great time with with all the, um, you know sort of aggro, you know, young guy with a chip on his shoulder, um, you know, sort of, you know, a bit of a rascal and all the rest of it, you know, and, and playing off you and, you know, and, and we were arch enemies and all the rest of it. Um, and then, you know, hooked up with Angel and sort of got a bit soft and, you know, and, and started, you know, doing anything for Angel, oh, you know, I'll do anything for you, I love you so much. Um, and it sort of just changed from then, you know, I, I had, nothing more to really give it was all just you know very ho-hum sort of I'm a nice guy now you know got the family and you know and then Dylan comes into the picture and you know became a family man at 19 which <laughs> I can't really picture being a family man and you know uh, it wasn't all that exciting to come to work and and you know try and act like I was you know 10 years older than than I was you must have been the envy of millions of guys across the globe getting to kiss Melissa every day what was it like kissing her Oh, you know, um, I never had any feelings towards Melissa, so it was uh, it was different. Um, of course, you know, uh, it was all just work. So to go in and you know and kiss Melissa all day sometimes actually became a bit tedious when you, know, you just gotta <laughs> suck face with somebody all day. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, and it was it's you know it's just like a, another part of work which you have to do you don't sort of really get over excited about it is she um is she your... she's been eating garlic <laughs> 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 Melissa, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've got no idea why you're so popular but um i know um, neither do i <laughs> <laughs> what you know why why do you think what do you put it down to who knows honestly got no idea um you know i came straight out of school i was in year 11 and and, you know, at, in March of year 11, I did a couple of months of, of year 11, and then I started work on Home and Away. And from there, it just sort of progressed, um, you know, to being known overseas and, you know, and all the What about at school? Did the, did um, the girlies used to be no, keen for action at no, school? No, not at all. Um, so, you know, it, it just sort of... I mean, obviously, working in, in the industry, you know, you become known on television and then people, you know... It's not because of one particular reason or another. It's basically a lot of the time because you're on telly that they love you. You know, you're, you're some sort of special kind of person, which is, you know, not true at all. We're just, we're all normal, you know, normal people. What's your ideal woman? Someone with a, you know, a sense of humour, athletic. And, you know, I, I like somebody who's sort of into, into fitness and, and, and health and, you know, stuff like that. So you think you're going to... Uh settle down and have a few kids oh uh, no i think in maybe 10 years you know yeah uh sort of 30 ish uh maybe so but uh not not in the near future at all yeah. i think um you know i feel that that's why a lot of young marriages don't work you know and um because being young you have to experience life yourself you have to experience it for yourself rather than, you know, trying to share it with somebody else and bring up a family. So um, you're quite selfish. Yeah. <laughs> but now, and, and I think that's the time that you have to be. You, you've got to get over your, your youth, otherwise you'll you know, turn 30, 35, 40 or, or whatever, and you get to that 
midlife, you know, kind of crisis period where you sort of think, oh, hang on, you know, I haven't, I, I want to do all these, you know, all these things that I should have done, you know, 10, 15 years ago.